Today, I wanted to do a quick lesson on serve strategy. I was playing a match the other day and I was the server's partner and I noticed myself making a mistake that I was able to correct and help my partner hold serve uh, more often as the match went on and I wanted to kind of go over that here today. Um, so this is essentially a lesson for the server's partner. So if the server's here, uh, you're up here at the net and what I'm gonna go over is how you can read the returner and get more involved at the net. Even if you're not a very good net player, even if you're not very confident up there, um, this is a really simple way to force more return errors and get more volleys as the server's partner. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to go over is uh, there's a few pieces of advice you probably hear from different tennis coaches uh, about um, watching the ball, following the ball on the doubles court. So I wanted to talk about that to start. Um, so when you're the server's partner, uh, the key to this strategy, to reading the returner, is not to watch the ball. And this is what I was doing the other day. I was, you know, I, I'd go back, I'd talk to my partner, he'd say, okay, we're gonna do a T serve and you, um, you just pinch towards the middle. So I would be looking right here and waiting for the ball to land. And what would happen is, if I knew he hit the T-serve, I would pinch towards the middle, and it was very predictable, but a few times this player uh, read the T-serve and they ran around it and hit a forehand and beat me up the line. So what, what, what was more important for me uh, that I figured out a little bit later in the match is instead of watching the ball, I need to be watching the player because if it's a T-serve and it gets to their backhand, that's fine, I can move up here towards the middle. But if it's a T-serve and they run around it, I know that this particular player likes their inside out forehand. So he's able to get to here, I'm here, and he's got all this court open to beat me down the line. And, we, and he did that several times. So later on in the match, when we'd call a T-serve, what I would do is stare at the returner instead of watching for the ball. So then I knew if he started to shift to his left, and as soon as he turned for that forehand, I knew that I would have to be over here to recover for that down the line shot. And what that did is that forced him to go cross court so that we could stay in the point. Um, now, if he would turn to, for a backhand and didn't get around that ball, then I was able to be a little bit more aggressive. So again, uh, don't watch the ball, watch the player. This is really, really important. So the next lesson uh, is follow the ball. So I did a video on this a few weeks ago. We'll link to it below. Um, but essentially what a lot of coaches will teach you is if your partner serves out wide, you should shift to the left and follow the ball. If they serve down the tee, you should shift to the right and follow the ball. And this is a little bit oversimplified. And again, I'll link to the other video below. But um, what I did is I actually sent that video to um, uh, a former podcast guest uh, and top uh, 20 doubles player in the world, Gabby Dabrowski. Uh, and she totally agreed with me. She said, uh, yeah, you're right. A lot of coaches do teach that. And, um, and, and you're right. We shouldn't be always following the ball like that. Uh, and instead of following the ball, what we need to do is read their tendencies. So the best time to do this is early on in the match. Uh, if you can uh, stay aggressive early in the match, poach, especially on low risk points. So if we're up 30 love, I might say, hey, let me poach here and let's see what happens. Let's see what they try to do. Um, try to bait them into the down the line return, see if they look comfortable with it. Uh, so you can kind of experiment a little bit more early in the match, especially if you get up you know, 30 love, 40 love, 40, 15 in a game. Um, you can kind of test some things out and look for their tendencies. Most players have a favorite return or a favorite place they like to hit their forehand return and that they like to hit their backhand return. Uh, for a lot of players, it's going to be across their body. So uh, in the deuce court here, if my partner hits a T-serve, a lot of players like to hit that backhand return down the line. And then if they hit wide, a lot of players like to hit that forehand return cross court. And same thing is true for the ad court here. Um, so you wanna read what their tendencies are. Uh, it's not always across the body, but that's typically um, where I look to start uh, against any 
um, any opponents that um, I haven't played against before, for example. But I've definitely played against players uh, in the ad court who love their down the line backhand. Um, so uh, read their tendencies and then you can adjust accordingly. And by combining that with watching the player uh, come second set, when you have a good feel for their tendencies, you can just read as soon as they turn. If you know that ball is going to be cross court because they like to hit their uh, backhand inside out cross court, you can stay super aggressive as soon as they turn to try to force them into that uncomfortable down the line shot. Um, and then an another example of when to use this is on the body serve. So the body serve is a great time uh, to uh, kind of be flexible at the net. You might call a poach or you might call a fake or, or a pinch, but um, what I would encourage you to do is wait and kind of read the returner. So um, with your partner, the server, they need to know if you're gonna poach. So what you might do is you might just call a pinch and say, hey, I'm gonna pinch here. So that way, you know you can be very aggressive with the pinch if uh, they tend to hit their forehand cross court, for example. Um, so as soon as they turn for that forehand, you can stay super aggressive. Or if they like to hit their backhand down the line, um, you can uh, be a little bit less aggressive and just kind of move forward here and cover some of that alley. So um, this is a great, uh, a great time to use it on these, these body serves. Uh, if you're a beginner player um, and you're not calling serve locations or if you play with someone who doesn't like to uh, do signals or call serve locations, uh, you can do the same thing. All you have to do is watch the player and read their tendencies and then uh, start to move accordingly. So um, next time you're out on the court, when you're the server's partner, you're up there at the net, uh, make sure you're not watching the ball until you know what the returner is doing. The first thing you need to be looking for is look for that shift so you know if they're hitting a forehand or a backhand return, and then read their tendencies on where they like to go for each of those, and you can adjust your movement accordingly. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more videos uh, with this whiteboard this year, so be sure to subscribe to our channel, uh, and I will uh, talk to you in the next one. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Doubles Strategy newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players, all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.